Now, he is deemed to be as controversial as he is passionate about matters, politics, policy, and ideology. But on this episode of The Hot Seat, we bring you another side to a man who is keen and passionate about matters business, enterprise and the economy. We speak to Kiharu Member of Parliament Ndindi Nyoro, who also regards himself as the hustler's clerk, aka Deputy President William Ruto's lieutenant, or if you like, right hand man in Team Tanga Tanga and the Hustler Nation. So join us, won't you? Tonight, we are taking the hot seat somewhere that has quite literally been hot. We are going to Moranga County, and specifically, we're speaking to the Member of Parliament for Kiharu constituency, which quite interestingly happens to be where I come from, Meheshi Mwandin Dinyoro. Thank you so much for joining us on the hot seat. Thank you, Jackie. Before we get into that hotness, to see to see Chome Kiti Kwanza, Ibani Yanguke, we normally give you a platform on the hot seat basically to just give us your story. So we want to take you back to where it all began. Did the Nyora Litoka Wapi? Um, where were you born? How was life growing up for you? Education? Give us that aspect of your life. Thank you, Jackie, even for having me this afternoon. First of all, I'm very privileged to be here. Uh, first, because you are a son, you are a true daughter of. Kiharu and Muranga County, and more specifically, your dad is my very good friend, mm -hmm. Mr. Maribe, mm -hmm. and uh, he's my mentor mm -hmm. in many respects, mm -hmm. because he once tried to be member of parliament for Kiharu, and actually when I was vying for, to be a student leader in Kenyatta University, he's one of the people who supported me financially. Oh, nice. So up to date, he's my friend, mm -hmm. and I am happy to sit with the daughter of my friend uh, on this platform. I was born in Kiharu, specifically a village called Gatugoro in Gadukeini. I went to school in Gadukeini Primary School. Then high school, I was uh, to be admitted uh, to a school you know called Kiagodo Boys. But unfortunately, there was no enough money for me to go there. Uh, because uh, the setup of our family, ilikuwa na mashida mingi wakati. So I went to a high school called Kiabugi. By then it was being called Kiabugi Boys, Kiabugi Secondary School. It changed its name to Kiabugi Boys High School. Lakini tukiwa huko tuligoma maramingi sana. Then it was transformed. Nowadays it's called St. Paul's Boys. The real Paul from Saul to, uh, to Paolo. Basically, my life is uh, the normal uh, Gishagi guy, a Gishagi boy. A Masinani boy, so to say, because high, uh, primary school, just like uh, Gadaivi, where you come from. I went to school, of course, without shoes. It was the norm then. Of course, the school uh, was a, a normal rural school with no much infrastructure. And on the side of the family, I was brought up in a mud house a three-roomed mud house, up to my adulthood. My father used to work in, uh, as a carpenter. He used to practice and live in Dika. In Dika, he was living in a slum called Kiaduto Slums. My mother still is, even now, uh, just a normal farmer, so to say peasant, because Shaba Nikidogo, just for subsistence. We have three sisters who are ahead of me, so when I was in high school, all of us we were, we were actually in, in various learning institutions. One sister was in a teacher's college, the other one was in a university, the other one in high school, and myself in high school. So for me to look for ways to survive, even before I went to high school, I had already started business when I was in class six. In class six. In class six. And I'm not trying to say this. You know, nowadays when you give a story, a motivational one, <laughs> people start making fun that I started a bushery with. The <laughs> <laughs> this is a real, a real a story. Real and I'm saying it not because it, is, uh, not because it is exceptional, but because many of the people of my age 
uh, we've passed through those kind of uh, that 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 kind of a phase in life. So from class six, I had a shop. Um, then I went to high school. High school from the first day I reported, I was doing business. One, I was mending other uh, other students' uh, shoes. So I was a cobbler. Cobbler in high school. In high school, I used to sell. Uh, the normal macadise that students consume, biscuits, sweets, etc. And of course, after making something, I would let now those who came from Nairobi fair, then they would return on uh, an interest rate of 50%. Yes. So it was just a way of survival yes. uh, and also to supplement the ritual that my parents would get. But unfortunately, when I was in uh, Form 1, my dad, Akapas, so uh, I really had to step in as a man in terms of doing the real things. Yakutafita pesa. So over the holidays, Nachoma Makanyu Bani, I would go to Dika. Uh, my sister had already established, my elder sister had a Kamtuba shop. So I used to go and now sell the Motuba at a place called Mokereti in Dika. Nowadays, there are, uh, there are, there are, there are flats that were built on that, that, that uh, land or th th that particular spot. So normally, uh, that is where I've come from. So of course, from Kiabugi, I went to KU. KU, I did business still, and also being a student leader, and then transitioned, of course, now from university to the normal life up to where I am now. But it sounds like um, through your education life, you're very business savvy. Yeah. So by the time you're going to KU, what was the dream? Where did you see Ndindi Nyoro ending up in life? What was the path? Jackie, I had two dreams when I was growing up. Fortunately, some of them I wrote them down. Oh, really? And because I'm a Christian, I definitely know now that what you actually believe in your heart, ultimately you get it. If the world can stop for anyone with, with a mission and a goal, that is so solid in them. Because I had, I don't know where it came from because I was just a Spartan poor boy, but I had a dream of being rich. I had a dream of having a lot of money <laughs> and a dream of being powerful. Mm -hmm. And actually, I remember, I would share this with, with, with my colleagues or uh, fellow students, even in high school, they could barely connect because, first of all, the primary I went to, there is no one of, uh, no one in Kenya that, I, that, that uh, is an alumni of note. Mm -hmm. Or even in my high school, it was not the kind of high schools that produce uh, people who lead nations or lead, uh, 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 or... or, or um, Get into leadership positions. Exactly, into leadership positions. Uh, like the one I currently occupy. In terms of business, yeah. you were saying um, you have to be powerful and you know you have to be wealthy or rich, as you put it. So while in high school, the dream for business? Business was more self-interest because I wanted a good life and of course to get my family into some dignified living. Mm -hmm. But in terms of looking for power was more ideological. Ideological because I started reading uh, of curriculum books way then, back then. I, I, by the time I was in high school, I had read so much about Martin Luther King Jr. I had read so much about um, Abraham Lincoln. I had read so much about inspirational figures who actually changed the cause of uh, nations and the cause of uh, leadership. So I really wanted to get into leadership not purely for my own sake, but to see if there is something I can add into, uh, uh, into making our country and even my constituency a better place. How hard or easy was it to get into um, the university senate at that time? It was hard, definitely, because uh, with, from the time I reported to uh, KU, I knew I would vie for student positions. Immediately? I knew. And even in my first semester, I was already laying ground. My second semester in my first year, I vied to be a congressperson. I didn't make it. 
So in my second year, I went again and invited to now represent the entire student body, and I was elected as a, uh, we used to call it academic secretary, representing students in the university senate and the university senate executive. So I was just trying to make a point that mainstream, for me, is much more preferable. Because, for example, in terms of Kenya, if you are not in parliament, if you are not in the executive or in the judiciary, yes, you will add up to into the narrative and into the discussion, but where the rubber meets the road it's, is, is when you actually are in a position where you can effect those desirable changes. Yeah. So, it, you know, all things have to come to an end and therefore, you know, your time at uh, the university yeah. comes to an end. Yeah. But now you've already tasted yeah. leadership. What next after that for you? Jackie Way, from the time I was in uh, first year, I visited our former MP, and I'm sure Unamjua, called Genya Karioki. He was then running a stock brokerage firm. I was actually going there to kumtuanisha, so to say. Kumushu, <laughs> mimi student leader, blah, 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 so that I can get something. Because I was, over the holidays, Nikiwa KU, I had a house I, I was given by my uncle in, in Langata. Then I got some internship in the Ministry of Trade. And of course, you know, the government doesn't pay internships. Or back then, yeah. there was no payment. So I used to walk from Langata to town. So I went to Genya Karyuki's place, Kumtuanisha Nipata Yafea. But I had carried an envelope and my CV. So the secretary, Aliona Tuni me beat, Uyu Jamana Tafta Kazi. The Siku Naida Kutafta Kazi. I can hear Bia, boss is uh, busy, but you can leave your CV. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't going there to leave my CV. So Nikayacha, before the week ends, he called me. Can you be a Urikuna Tafta Kazi? Nikamwa Bia, yes, sir. When do you want to start? I told him now. Can you be a Kuja Kesho? My corporate journey in terms of business started right then. Because that is the man who mentored me into financial services, a business that I do up to date. Maneno ya shares, maneno ya stockbroking, corporate, uh, maneno ya, 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 ya treasury bills, boards, offshore investments. He's the man who actually mentored me into that business. And also in terms of politics, he had been an MP before and a minister. He took me as his own son, and I learned a lot from Genya Karaoke. So from uh, first year in the university, I started doing stockbroking. Nikaanza company yangu ni bado nikiwa KU, yes stockbroking. And by the time I was leaving, during my graduation ceremony, my mother came and other friends from home. Sasa nikiwa chief guest because it's my graduation, they were expected Waone, iki, iki, iki jana inasema nini. Nili wabia, madhimu niyobe sana. Diyo nisipate kazi. I told them to pray for me not to get a job. Because I knew that was the trap. If I got a job, then I, I was to get into the normal comfort zone. And it's, I wouldn't push myself. So, I have been do, doing business since then and I have never looked for a job. And I think that is a better route because Kenya is deficient of job opportunities, not deficient of people looking for jobs. So if you can get more people creating these jobs, of course now what we do is that uh, we, we, we get them off the list of the job seekers and they become job creators, which to me is the basis of a growing economy. But at a young age, uh, and I'll say young because I know at <laughs> but um, at a young age and as, as a youthful leader, is this a problem that we're even currently facing now with the youth, that they just sit down and say, oh, I have a CV, I'm looking for a job, I'm looking for a job, instead of turning that into, I want to create a job opportunity for myself and do it myself. I cannot entirely blame the youth. The youth of Kenya are very enterprising, I mean, very creative, and above all, self-driven, because everyone wants to get rich, exactly. but the opportunities have continued to diminish. To diminish. 
that is the that is the major hurdle that you know we have to get through let's get into the politics of it so now you like i said you've tasted leadership in ku you're being mentored by you know one of the greatest i think political leaders in the region that we had and then now you say higher this is the journey that i want to take yeah how did that start so, so when you sit down and say i want to go for an elective seat. How did that start for you? I had no idea that I would vie for Kiharu MP At position. All? By 2016, I wasn't going to vie because by then, Irogo Kangata was the MP. Yes. He was my friend. Yes. There is no way I could uh, go to fight for a position mm -hmm. with him. Yes. Uh, so, I was sure I, 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 I'm not going into politics then, mm -hmm. maybe in future. Then, of course, there's the, uh, it, it appeared he, he was transitioning into another position. Yes. Then, I st of course, I, I, my, 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 I now started getting uh, attracted mm -hmm. to the position. And, of course, other people had some networks in Mashinani. Wakaniabia wea kujia ikiti. But of course, uh, I was, my eyes were set, yes. and I knew I, I was going for it. Mm -hmm. So I campaigned for a very short time, actually. I can imagine, because if by 2016 you hadn't made that decision, yeah. you have less than a year. I in fact... To, uh, to, to announce it, to go around, to, you know... Exactly. I had announced my bid in the, on the 29th of January, 2017. What? That is when I officially launched my campaigns. Then I did a lot of intensive campaigns. Uh -huh. Two, three months, we went into nominations, mm -hmm. and then Koja Kumarizia. What? Yeah. That is, that is interesting. So getting the people of Kiharu constituency, and um, you know, this is where we've had like very big names in, in, in the political sphere, um, you know, representing. Mm -hmm. Then here comes someone who has just announced a bid uh, the other day. And then you get the people of Kiharu behind you. How, how was that? Because I can imagine it must have been an uphill task. I agree. But uh, I think the ease in, in the entire process was that I was just real. I mean, I was me, a boy who just grew up the other day in this village. So I could identify with the, the people of Kiharu. Because I've grown from there. I mean, Mimi, see, Nairobi ni mekuja ni kikuja university. Where's the bone town? Yeah, at <laughs> all, even visiting. Mm -hmm. So by virtue that I could actually understand every bit of rural life in Kiharu, then it wasn't so hard for me to actually go around mm -hmm. because I was living my life. Meeting those people even now is living my, my real life, actually. When I go to Kiharu, I'm seated down kwa nyasi na watu wa Kiharu. That is actually the real me. Tukikura miwa, hapo tukipiga stories zetu. Zero struggle. The transition as well from, you know, age-wise. Yeah. Because now from uh, Senator Irungu Kangata when he was MP to now you. But the ones who were there before you, well, clearly you can see the age difference that yeah. was there. So this transition, are we... Are we coming of age, is there an awakening, you would say? Especially in places like Keharu. Uh, unfortunately, Jackie, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> if you look, uh, if you read history books, mm -hmm. we are actually doing worse off than yesteryears, both here in Kenya and internationally. Why am I saying so? Mwaike Baki was the CEO of Kanu when he was 29 years. He became an MP at bearing my age when I became an MP. All these people that have now become very seasoned politicians, Orengos, I mean, any name that you may mention, they came into politics at our age. If you go to South Africa, for example, Nelson Mandela was leading the youth league of ANC when he was barely 26. A place like France, Somebody like Napoleon Bonaparte was a general of the army by the time he was, I think, 26. 
he was already reading France at 35. So uh, even currently, if you look the age of the president of France currently, and it's many other uh, jurisdictions, we are actually doing worse off in terms of having youth at the policy making level than yesteryears. Tom Boyer, I mean, at my age, he was touted to be not just a member of parliament, but a leader of a nation. So we have a long way to go. And I have to say that even the demographics, and I'm speak, speaking to the youth, the demographics favor us. If you look at the percentage of actually the voters, the bulk of the voters, those who actually uh, uh, the, the majority is the youth. But again, the way you craft your campaigns is not purely about relying on a segment of a certain youth group, uh, of a certain age group. You craft your campaigns on issues. And when you are talking about uh, issues in Masinani, people don't really care about your age or even gender. People listen to kitu yangu imeweko hapo, ile barabara yetu yuko hapo. Real issues. And I think that is the model on which my platform, uh, my, my campaigns were based. Yeah. You're a very vocal member of uh, the Jubilee Party, but now, um, so to speak, as they say, there's trouble in paradise. Yeah. The Jubilee Party sold a dream to Kenyans in 2013 and 2017 and came, there was this bromance and, you know, but now it's leaving such, what is happening is leaving such a bitter taste in the mouths of many of its supporters. Mm. And some of you have quite clearly drawn the line of, you know, I am on this side or I am on this side. Mm. It is not a lie. Where when it's in Hey, Kabisa. Damu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm? Yeah. What if there is a, a, a marriage again of sorts? What happened? You know, Jackie, the marriage you're talking about, because I can <laughs> clearly tell where you're headed, <laughs> Is a, is a marriage where Jackie Maribe was born into a marriage. Muzee Maribe, who is my friend, wakakosana kidogo, then you, you, you go back to Gadaibi. <laughs> I mean, the, that is the natural, that you continue your life where you left it. Where you left it. But why the split? Why, why promise Kenyans, you know, this picture-perfect unity and then now it is so, the lines have been drawn. Nko yes. tanga tanga nyinyi, nko kieleweke. Sasa nyinyi kama tanga tanga. First of all, are you under Hustlers Clark? Are you Hustler Nation? I am. I am of course. Yo, hata mimi nisi kusema. Sikiona ujakuja na kufia ya, ya Hustlers. Nisi fikiria utaniyabia ni toe. Toe. Unge tuletea tutuone. But anyway, tell us about the Hustler Nation and what exactly is happening. Because I think there's a lot um, that is left to be desired, especially among your supporters, and especially within the Mount Kenya region. What exactly is happening within the Jubilee House, Tanga Tanga, Kieleweke, all these factions? We go into an election. We promise people of the people of Kenya, Stima, Barabara, all the rest, yes. We promised the people of Kenya a housing program that was to employ thousands of youth. Then along the way, we get some people, Fisi Abayo imeweka, imejipaka rangi, ikakaa kama ni kitu mzuri sana, coming into our house. And then they tell us, no, 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 no. Hii maneno ya housing wachana nayo, na hii gini wachana nayo. Now we are going to have another agenda, an agenda called BBI. Jackie, in my opinion, that is where the cracks in Jubilee became evident, and that is where the rain actually started beating us. Because the other side of the divide cannot start a campaign that is based on empowerment, that is based on making Kenya better, that is based on employment, that is based on creating jobs, that is based on issues. The only politics they understand is the politics of balkanization. So we tried our best to hold together as the Jubilee because some of us who bought that idea actually saw it as the best opportunity 
to actually um, Kokoboa Kenya, deliver Kenya from these shackles and from these chains of always after five years you are reminded that uh, you are from this tribe. And again, Jackie, if you look at the two models, if you continue domiciling our politics on the basis of ethnicities, I'm sure you have a friend called Anton Diama. I was with him in KU. He comes from a tribe, Wakiitwa Nyayo Stadium, Hawataja. Yet he's a bright man. When will he ever get an opportunity and a chance to articulate, both in terms of speaking and doing, the, the, the bright brain that he has? There are many Kenyans who are bright, many Kenyans who can lead, who may not necessarily come from the dominant tribes. When will they ever get an opportunity? Number two, when we talk about tribes, all around from the independence, Watu husema, tunaugia maneno ya wakikoyu. And that is far from the truth. When we say we are talking about Luos in, in ODM, or Okikoyus in a Jubilee, we are not talking about no Mokikoyus and Luos. We are talking about a few men. A few men who have continued to take advantage of all oh, Adwanyoba, blah, 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 nonsense. And yet, they continue to amass. They continue to make their families uh, more dominant in businesses. They continue to own banks. They continue to own manufacturing companies based on the produce our mothers get from our small farms. There is no you will come and convince me that now because I'm Kikuyu, nipigio huyu mutu saruti, na yeye ni yeye tu anaedereya kutajirika akitumia wa Kikuyu. There is no way you will tell Anomo Luo, whose houses we are demolished in Kibra, that now this is an awakening of Luos. You know, again, it's this tribe. And when you actually fight, when you are actually tear gassed, when you, are, you actually recruit the railways, when all that is done, it is the daughters and sons and relatives of these kingpings who actually benefit. That is mediocrity. And from where I sit as a young person, there is no way to taiderea kuzidikisha wanaume. And that is the analogy I started with there before. Hawking influence. You come to Moranga, you tell us, you know, hey, Kikuyus needs to be united, oh, blah, 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 Kingpin, Hapo, Tunakupea Kiti. You go become a better person in the national politics. Then what happens? Kikuyus coffee, bay in Ashuka. You come from a tea growing area, Jackie. Tea, tea farmers are receiving the worst bonus. Sees Moy's regime. Those are Akikuyus who say we are in power. During a time when Akikuyu is in power, Vitu Zawakikuyu from China, Zikachomwa. During the same time Akikuyu is in power, Jackie, Kariobagi, which are Akikuyus, their houses expect at women, young children, at the middle of a pandemic called Corona, we are thrown away or thrown out of their houses. Now, juxtapose the same. Now let's look at the big men. Yes. Now I have given you a story of a small Kikuyu man, a new man, downtrodden down there, wanaume wanamkanyanga wakieda ju. The men who, because leadership, Jackie, Nivire unashiku wa hivi na watu. And I always get this analogy from watu mashinani. Ukishiku na hapa kuna muti ya maembe. Watu ukushikilia, you go prune, utoe hiyo maembe, kwa za kura. Hatu kurizi, hatu wale kura. Ukishiba, you can only eat at least 10, 10 mangoes. Now, there are thousands of mangoes. Hiyo igine ni utoe urushi hao ingine. Hata tukipukupea benefit of doubt that you are actually even going to eat. Now, tumesikiria watu pale juu. Wamekura maembe, ye ya meshiba. Watu wanakufa jaa hapa chini. Instead of wakulisia maembe, you are saying, no, 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 hile imebaki, weka kwa fridge. Tutakura niki, ja, iki, tutakura niki pata ja. That is the mediocrity of having a thinic-based politics. Raira Odinga made a hard shake. You can write books. You can write a thesis 
about how Raira Odiga made a hard sick or went to Uhuru Kenyatta and he, they had a hard sick. Tell me how a normal rule has benefited. Tell me how a normal Costarian, the people who voted 100% for, for, for ODM, have benefited. It is the same time that the same Costarians have lost their jobs in Mombasa. And you know how. It is the same time that the normal Luos, Manyubazao hapa Nairobi, zimebomolewa. Now, remove now the normal Ruo. Come now to the big boys Ruo. It is the same time the normal Luos, all of a sudden, after the hardship, old men and have now become youth. Their skins are glowing. Kautabi kanatokea. They are planting their family members in influential positions. And then you tell me you are fighting for our country. There is no way you can fight for our country or we are going to deliver our country if you continue domiciling our politics within ethnicity. Because how ni wanaume wawili watatu. When we talk about issues, the platform changes. The essentials in politics change from the kingpins to people. You know, this politics of, the, of ethnicity, Jackie, you've been uh, reporting politics for a long time. And you know this is, these are not theories that I'm giving you. We have had, from independence, siasa is determined in boardrooms. Mukikuyu anakuja, na briefcase ya kurayake. Mujalu anakuja, briefcase ya kurayake. Mukalijin, briefcase ya kurayake. They meet in such a hotel. They make a transaction. Transaction is made by five men. What is there to be divided is divided within those five men. Now we want to change that narrative now. And we want to change that conversation from a few men sitting down to decide to, to the people deciding which cause our country should take. Yes, we will have a leader. But let us have a leader leading issues. And that is why myself, I'm very happy about this as a narrative. At least we are not talking about Kikuyus, but Afurushua from where? Or we are not talking about Kisis, but Afurushua from where? Or Jaluo, but Afurushua from where? We are talking about the people who have always enjoyed colonial privilege, who are the richest in this country, who buy, who continues to buy Kenyans after every five years, because they can buy all the aspirants, they can buy all the leaders. We are telling you, please, Please, kweni tu na aibu kidogo. Toshekeni, haturizi hile marioyo temumechukua kwa wa Kenya. We are not asking you about the sea of interest that you have actually implanted into the national interest so that you have benefited from the policies. We are not asking you about all those things. What we are saying, now give the hasra some space. There is no way you are now building your tender home and Hasra is sleeping in a sack. Please, instead of building your 15th home, let now the Hasra at least get somewhere. Yakuka kama hanyeshevi. That is all that we are asking. And I was coming to that, that the dynasties versus uh, Hasla narrative. Is, um, is the Hasla narrative now turning into something that you did not envision when it started. Is it still about empowerment or is it now just a political tag of, you know? Because nowadays if you go outside there and tell somebody, you know, I'm a hustler, it's a Oh, when you are Ruto. So is it still empowerment or is it now a political tag? Are you losing the grip of what the hustler narrative was about? All these things you are talking about empowerment. All these things we are talking about hustlers. All these things we are talking about Kenya is borrowing 2.5 billion every day. All those things will never change when we get microphones in political barazas. They will only change if you get power. So yes, the hustler movement, for it to realize fruits, cannot just be a narrative out there, people making noise. It has to be mainstreamed into politics. Because a leader in Kenya is elected through a political process. So. I have to say it is good that actually we have a very good presidential candidate with real chances who is carrying the hustler's tag and the hustler's narrative. Because it will be a tragedy 
if we have the same narrative out here, then a demagogue comes and steps in. You'll get, we have had uh, elections in Ukraine, for example, where because people wanted change, wanted change at any cost. Yes. A joker came from wherever. He was elected as president. At the very least now, we have a very good, credible candidate, experienced in politics and in leadership, who is actually carrying the flag of the Hustlers Nation. Because it will be a tragedy when people's hearts continue warming up in the Hustlers narrative. Then, to Kifika 2017, Jackie, uh, 2022, some guy there, a token of a man who is a man who is a man so we start now regretting the issue of being popular before elections and actually delivering when you are elected, which you have seen in many countries happening. At the very best currently, we have a narrative that is resonating and the leader who is leading us is actually a person with real chances of getting elected and that person has got experience, has got the brain, has got the energy which we actually need to transform the entire landscape. Of our, of our conversation as a country. Is there any such thing as starting campaigns too early or too late? Because as you go out as Hustler Nation and we've seen um, you guys going round, it's been, you know, translated into campaigning already. Is there such a time as too early or too late? And are you campaigning? Hey, Jackie, even if, even if we were campaigning, because I did come here to, to soothe egos. We have the right to campaign if we wanted to. I mean, I'm a member of parliament for Kiharu. I have competitors who go around the constituency. I have never stopped them from campaigning. You understand? So every Kenyan has a right. Even if I want to campaign now, no one can stop me. It is my right. Even if we are not campaigning now, the reason why we are not campaigning is because there are some deliverables to be made to Kenyans. But it remains our right to campaign. But let's look at the narrative of campaigning. We are told, when you go to a church function in Keno, you guys are campaigning. Right now, as I talk to you, we were to go to, 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 to Mumias mm -hmm. for a church fundraiser, which this government cancelled. Today... But isn't it a government that you're in? Yes, I'll, I'll uh, actually tell you whether I'm in or not. Okay. <laughs> right now, Diga is hosting... A delegation. Yes. A delegation. What is that delegation going to do? To run farming? What are they going to do? Are they going there to, for, for a Bible study? You know, no. It's, it's, that, that's not the case. Why are they there in Bordeaux? They are there for campaigns. The double standards with this government is deepening double standards, blatant, I mean, it is, it is just too blatant. And carelessly, being carelessly expressed by the people holding the instruments of government. So when this person goes to donate money to a Boda Boda, let, let, let me not say this person, when William Luther goes to Masairad to celebrate a cultural event. That is politics. Some few days earlier, we had Matiangi Waigoro going for the same function. That was national building, cohesion, peace. When William Ruto hosts a delegation from Muranga at his current residence, oh, are campaigns. Oh, you mutu ameanza siyasa. When Rairaudika goes to Kajiado, donning ODM uniform, hosting women for a campaign, oh, Baba is uniting the country, nchi ikuwe pamoja. When Peter Kenneth, anatoka hapa na mabaz, yanaeda bodo. So, kikuyus are known to be entrepreneurs. Wameda huko kutafuta prots. Wajaeda huko kutafuta prots. They have gone there for politics. You may fool some of the people some of the time. And you may fool some of the people all the time. But you cannot fool all the people all the time. Kenyans wa merevuka. 
we have the right to campaign. Just as Raira Odiga has the right to campaign. Even with, even with what happened um, in Morang, and I want us to go to that, do you feel there is a concerted effort after this split to just simply frustrate the deputy president? To? Frustrate him. You, you know, Jackie, <laughs> the word frustration <laughs> in reference to DP and this government is actually immature or hapa. And every Kenyan knows, even a small kid, that after this, the elections in 2017, deputy president's roles were transferred to Matiangi. That is a foregone, con I mean, that's a foregone uh, case. We also know that the people who were in government as cabinet secretaries, who were seen to be friends of DP, were thrown out. We also know that myself as a DP, uh, as a hustler's uh, right hand man and supporter, I was given a committee that you've never heard of in this National Assembly of ours. That Kemani Shongwa, a Litorewa budget, Akawekwa Igini Akupika, Kurebunge. Kenyans know it's, it was not a matter of allegiance and a matter of expertise and how you execute your roles. It was a matter of who are DP's friends. I want to ask these guys, do you think has, that has reduced the popularity of William Ruto? So that you imagine that frustrating him even more will uh, serve you what you want. You may continue frustrating all our meetings. But soon, I am sure, Kenyans will show you that Kenya hamuna title ya Kenya kwa mfuko yenu. Kenya ni yasisi wote. There is no way you will allow this Raida Odiga to hold meetings, poli uh, political meetings. You brat them, whatever you want to brat them. And when Dedenyoro is addressing five people, oh, this is politics. You, you will not go, I mean, that uh, nonsense, Kenyans will not allow it to continue for too long. And I'm sure about that. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to what happened in Keno because, you know, we have to talk about that. These are scenes that, you know, would rarely be witnessed in an area like that. You know, um, um, the violence, you know, clashing and whatever, just because of the deputy president's visit. What really happened in Moranga? Jackie, I have said... From where you come from. Because yes. Because I know it's a police issue. So from where you come from, yeah. and as much as you can tell us, we yeah. can see. Jackie, I have actually... I'm looking forward to not just having a monologue. I'm looking forward to, I wish you called us myself mm -hmm. and one of the people who planned those chaos mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. we face off with evidence. Mm -hmm. This chaos were planned and executed by Kieleweke MPs in cohorts and in a joint venture with the government of Kenya. Mm -hmm. Can you back that up? I have evidence of where the meetings were being held, and I've mentioned on national TVs, Edgewood Hotel, another uh, club in Dika. I've mentioned that Waj Wajiru Sabina Chege gave money at Dika Greens. I also mentioned that another senior government official gave money in a hotel just at the outskirts of Moranga Town. I have all those evidence. I mean, if they want photos, we have. The Hasra Nation has got people everywhere. If they want CCTV cameras, we have them. I mean, the footages, we have them. And if all these things I'm seeing, I'm not backed up by facts. I'll be in court right now. Some other money came from the Interior Ministry. Some other money came from government murderings, people working within government who are senior. So it was a joint venture. And I want to tell you, Jackie, if we had anything to do with that madness, you know what would have happened to us. Because they have the instruments of power. They can track my phone. They know my whereabouts every single minute. So if, if, if any Tagataga -taga person had an iota of anything to do with those chaos, uh, I, I'm sure you know uh, it should not be rosy for us. So it is them. They should carry their baggage. And I'm saying those people are murderers. Mm -hmm. The lives that we are lost there, mm -hmm. Sabina Chege, and those pe other people, you are cohorts above and below. You are murderers. And 
you should face Kenyans and apologize. And if I am lying, why can't you please take me to court for defamation? Mm -hmm. Back to, you know, from Moranga, back to what we were terming as frustrations. From Moranga to Nyamira, yeah. you know, for instance, a church function and, um, you know, youth a fundraiser for youth empowerment. And then we see truckloads and truckloads of uh, security people, uh, police, coming in again, frustrations, and yet uh, the same uh, former Prime Minister Ray Lodinga was there but nothing happened, frustrations. Is this something that now you're anticipating will continue as you move on? And what are you planning to do about it? They told us that we... And Mumias as well, like you had mentioned. Yeah. They met and uh, decided we need to notify police uh, three days prior and all those other narratives mm -hmm. and uh, citations they gave in a presser. We'll continue to do what we can to obey the rule of the land. But I want also to tell them that disobeying bad laws is part of loving our country. Is that disobeying mediocrity is part of patriotism. We will hold our horses we will continue to do all that we can so that we can have a rule-based country and a country where the rule of law takes precedence. And you will hold yourself to that. We will do our level best. Mm -hmm. And we are asking our supporters to do our level best. Mm -hmm. We know to Meumizu mm -hmm. Let's continue holding unto that. With or without the support, with or without we're just saying the support. But, uh -huh. I have a but. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Some of these things may not depend on my wishes. Those youth that you are denying opportunities to be empowered, and you never take any time to empower them, a time may come, those youth will not hold it anymore. You have students from Kenyans, you people. And you know yourselves. I wish this lifestyle audit can be done as it was uh, envisioned. Mm -hmm. We see some of these people, when they got into positions, the companies they own, what was the market capitalization of those companies? How much profits were they making? How many agreements have they made with several other companies in Kenya which they are benefiting from poor Kenyans? out of misusing the positions they hold. All those things, a time will come and Kenyans will know. But you are only asking, Musifikiria wa Kenya ni kodo, you'll push us, push us, push us, push us. A time may come that Kenyans will not listen to us when we tell them, hold your horses. And I hope by then they'll deal with the Kenyans themselves. As I respect you, the deep state, as I respect you, the shallow state, as I respect you, the system, with your candidate Raira Odiga and Gideon Moy, me as a, me a hustler, please, why can't you accord me the same Heshima when I'm meeting my presidential candidate? I'm not asking for your money, which you have stolen from Kenyans since independence. Hatuitaki. But with our retro coins, please give us support when we are supporting Ware Tunaerewana. Yule mtu tu anataka huiru baru, nikimunulia huiru baru na mperekea, ata kama huwelewe huiru baru huvanya kazi gani, juwewe hujui, please accord him respect. Ye ya najua yu huiru baru is the only uh, gap they need to fill between where they are and the retro more coins they need to make. Please give us that, that respect. Mm -hmm. All right, as we wind up, I want us to bring it closer home and come back to Ndindi Nyoro, 2022. Tunayangalia wapi? Tunalenga wapi? Tunalenga wapi? Jackie, nitakupea answer yenye utaona pegina na kuchazea siyasa. Isn't it 
Nani yangu ya roho. I've told you I was not vying to be MP for Kiharu. By the last quarter of 2016. Yes. Una I had that made, I had not made up my mind. The best way of preparing about what you'll become tomorrow and which position you'll occupy is first to discharge the duties that you already given by the people so well now. That is my preoccupation. And honestly, hiyo ya huko bele, mungu wa mepanga. But as of now, I am MP for Kiharu, that is my preoccupation. And by the way, Jackie, I would want you to take a tour, not just to Morarandia, where you come from, but across Kiharu. Go to the school Mr. Maribe went to, Madhaivi Apa, you'll get we have renovated that school. We have tiled many schools in Kiharu, tiling. A child of a normal hustler, and I end up sure you tiles. We have done a lot in terms of infrastructure, and we are striving to spend all the minutes that we have, and the hours and the days, in fulfilling the desires of the people of Kiharu. That is my preoccupation. Mm -hmm. So until we get closer, and Sasa, you will look for direction, we'll from see. even from above. And I can tell you, this thing of above, for me, it's very personal. I, can, I, I cannot play politics with it. Yes. De Nero cannot be De Nero without God. Yes. All my plans about the future, what I'll ever become, it is purely about God. And that is why I f sometimes I feel like people are a bit insensitive when they start mixing, that when I go to give to my church, somebody stops me. Because we were doing that even before we became politicians. And I know for sure, for sure, Jackie, the De Nyoro cannot be the De Nyoro without Mugu Kueka right up. The next minute, the next year, 2022, here we leave it on the hearts of the of God with with all the hectic uh, schedule that is defined by politics how do you balance your your work your family how vocal you are outside there in the political arena how do you balance that and how's the family we always have time for everything Jackie and I can tell you there is no balance that is needed you know people imagine when you are elected then you become all of a sudden a very busy person I mean you can plan your time and every facet and sphere of your life you will have your attention because the day is too long has got 24 hours though adjusting in terms of trying to make use of as many hours as possible goes a long way and by the way Jackie as I as I finish up uh, some of these things we say them because they are younger people looking up to. Who aspire to be where you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, some people out there maybe wanaonanga, how are you at Agatanga, how are you at Agatanga, how are you at Agatanga, how are you at stress. Mm. Maybe William Ruto, maybe Dede Nyoro, mm. regarding a Shago and others, mm -hmm. Kimani Shomwa, Aris Wahome, mm -hmm. and all of us, mm -hmm. I'll shock you, Jackie. Mm -hmm. Maybe I enjoy, and William Ruto enjoys, deeper sleep mm -hmm. like a child mm -hmm. than many. <laughs> than many who now think he has stress. <laughs> than many of our colleagues mm -hmm. on the other side mm -hmm. of the system. Mm -hmm. Because Nadio Mimi, Jackie, you know, I'm not going to say that I'm not going to say that I've told you my story. Mm -hmm. A son of a carpenter living in Kiadutu slums. Mm. If my father was to rise up now, I'll be where that is your son on TV. Mm. He became an MP. Mm. He would never believe it. Mm -hmm. No one other than God got me from there to here. Yes. There is therefore no man under the sun, even around the president of Kenya. Mm. There is no one who has the capacity to terminate any person's dream. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. I give a lot of respect to President Kenyatta and all other leaders above me mm -hmm. because they are where they are mm -hmm. because God chose them. Mm -hmm. But with humility, Jackie, Aki, Mimi Makura Mutu and Isaac Tisha. Kwa sababu, nikitoka huko kuote, nikisoma, na ma school fees balance, nikiuza mutuba. It was just me and God. Sasa wae mwigini unafikiria utatoka wapi. And you come to imagine that I owe you so much, including my life and what I say. How can one be so entitled? Umenijua tu juzi. Then you want to tell me, you will be dictating what I say, mm -hmm. what I, how I say, mm -hmm. where I say. Mm -hmm. Respect is there, yes. Yes. But Kutishwa, mm -hmm. I can tell you, that is a no. You mekata. Akuna. You mekata. Zero. Not, not in a human being. Not in a human Akuna. being at all. And that is your stand. That is my my humble stand. Your humble. It is a humble stand. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for making the time for us here on the hot seat and thank you so much for always staying with us and for watching. We'll see you again next week. God bless.